Gouging Fire is one of the most powerful Paradox Pokemon released to date. With the proper stat distribution and a booster energy equipped, he can outspeed every Pokemon under neutral conditions. Once he's the fastest Pokemon on the field, he can either lower the opponent's attack stat with Breaking Swipe, or increase the attack stat of both Pokemon on your side of the field with Howl. But that's not all. He also has the signature move Burning Bulwark that acts like Protect for any attacking moves and burns any Pokemon that make contact with him. This is VGC Mike back again with more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Regulation F content. Today I'll be using this team built around Gouging Fire. Your primary partners for Gouging Fire will be King Gambit and Water Ogre Pond. King Gambit is helpful if you're trying to punish opponents for using Intimidate because of his Defiant ability, which will give him an attack increase instead of an attack decrease. His low speed also helps in a potential Trick Room matchup and his dark typing helps against Psy Spam. Ogre Pond is also a great option if you feel like you need Follow Me support, or if you want to use Howl on a fast physical attacker. Follow Me on Ogre Pond is a necessity next to Gouging Fire because Spore can go through Burning Bulwark. Ogre Pond is a grass type, so if he redirects the Spore, he'll be unaffected. This team also has Rapid Strike Urshifu and Tornadus to potentially sweep under Tailwind, and a Raichu that's specifically designed to counter Raging Bolt. I'll be featuring Raichu in my next video, so make sure to subscribe. Our current goal is to pass 500 subscribers. Thank you everyone, now let's get into the battles. Okay, so I'm heavily leaning towards the Gouging Fire setup because it is good into Shanpao and Dragonite. King Gambit is pretty hit or miss, I guess, in this situation. I think I'm leaning towards Ogre Pond and then Tornadus and Urshifu in the back. The only problem is the Rillaboom is pretty bad against, uh, or Urshifu is pretty bad against Rillaboom. So we'll definitely be relying on Tornadus to try to take care of him if that's the situation that we end up in. Alright, so the opponent leads Rillaboom right off the bat. We get our booster energy to increase our speed. Um, I don't see too much of a uh, concern as far as them setting up if I double protect. So I am going to do that. That would give them a good chance to switch in but they don't switch out. So I'm doing this because I don't want to deal with the fake out. We'll get to see if the Dragonite is choice banded. Potentially, we'll see what they are going to lock into. Drum beating, I'm not sure if that takes any... Nope, okay. All right, so they are actually locked into Outrage now, regardless of if they are choice banded. Um, I think because of that, I'm going to Terra Fairy. And then I'm going to target down the Rillaboom because of the fact that our our Urshifu is a big sweeper for us in the late game. So if we're lucky, the Outrage will go into our Gouging Fire, but regardless, we'll still have a Pokemon, a Fairy Pokemon, while well, they're potentially going to be locked into this. Okay, that's a one-hit KO. So we should get an Ivy Cudgel off here. It's a good chunk of damage. Okay, and we got the 50-50, got lucky there, but definitely 
a risk you take when you lock into Outrage. Okay, so the opponent's gonna send in their own Ogre Pond now. This is actually very easy for us to just lock into Breaking Swipe. They do have a Flutter main, but I don't think that they can switch yet because we didn't see the confusion go off unless I missed that. Um, and then I'll Horn Leech on the Dragon Knight slot in case it lives, which it does. I didn't want to. Okay. I did not want to use Ivy Cudgel in case they used Follow Me for whatever reason. But we get the KO anyway. Okay, probably because of the grass and terrain boosting us up a little bit, actually. So let's see what they do. Okay, they also use Horn Leech. So Breaking Swipe, helping to reduce the damage there, which is nice. We got to see that our own Ogre Pun is faster. Okay, and their last Pokemon is Chan Pao, which is not. Probably not going to help them enough to win the game. I'll use Breaking Swipe again. And then. Horn Leech on the Ogre Pond. Okay. Let's see if they can knock out our, own, or our Ogre Pond now. Okay, there's Icicle Crash, but they target down by Gouging Fire. Not too much damage. Yeah, and then with the Grassy Terrain and Chien Pao on the field, we're actually able to get the knockout there. So the Chien Pao's Focus Sash should be broken. This, uh, if they don't forfeit, then we will just pick up the KO with our Heat Crash. And then we might as well just lock into Ivy Cudgel here. Battle is cancelled. Alright, this is a unique team, but it does have a couple Pokemon that concern me. The Isuian Typhlosion is always a scary Pokemon to deal with um, in case you know, they want to start spamming eruptions. They can end up hitting their Pokemon faster than yours. Gouging Fire does resist eruption with both, both of his types, though, so that's definitely helpful. Ogre Pond's also looking pretty good here. I think we can lock into these two again. Um, yeah, I think we go Tornadus and Urshifu in the back too. And we don't even have to deal with Rillaboom or anything here. So if we can clear the way for Urshifu, he should be able to do pretty good against these Pokemon. The Jolteon is a concern uh, if we want to try to win the game with Urshifu, but with Tailwind up, it should be fine. Just matter, uh, it just comes down to if their own Tailwind is able to get set up with the Raging, no not Raging, but the Roaring Moon. This is a pretty weird duo. I guess maybe they just want to try to fake out one of our Pokemon and then get an eruption off. So I'm just going to double protect with both. See if that's the case. 
Typhlosion doesn't really set up either, so this is not a concern. This is just kind of waiting a turn, and if they do try to fake out, then they'll get hurt or burned. Okay, they're just going to get some chip damage. Real quick, how fast Monkey Dory is. Max is out at 173. Or 161. Um. Okay, I think because of that. I'm going to Breaking Swipe, and I'm going to Terra, and attempt to pick up a KO here. And we just went with Breaking Swipe to try to get some chip damage on the Typhlosion. If they're Choice Scarfed, we probably won't outspeed them. That's not too bad. In fact, kind of wish we just uh, targeted down Monkey Dory. I guess I overestimated uh, Typhlosion. Without the sun and everything set up, it really isn't. Actually, Monkey Dory is not too scary either in this position. Especially since they. I guess they're kind of slow. Wait, no, no, no. They went first. Yeah, they're not. They're not slow. So yeah, they could parting shot us this turn. So we'll probably, unless they send out something really scary, we'll probably try to heat crash them, uh, the Monkey Dory, to preserve our strength on our Ogre Pond. Okay. So yeah, we'll do that. Just go for a KO on Magmar. Okay, they're gonna withdraw their own Magmar. For Empoleon. I don't know if they thought I would try to breaking swipe there. That would have been pretty good, but I'm not really worried. Oh wow, Monkey Dory lived. Psychic noise, they switched it up. Um oh and they get the toxic chain off. I didn't notice. I should have been looking for it, but um, yeah, a lot of time people run um, Frisk. That's not bad. Is that a crit? No, it wasn't a crit. Okay. So let me think. Last Pokemon was Magmar. Heat Crash. Yeah, I think I will Heat Crash and I'm going to switch into Tornadus. Just because that Ivy Cudgel could actually be pretty substantial. And they go for their switch. So he crash shouldn't do too much to uh, Magmar. And they actually go for an ice attack, which Tornadus does dodge. And they get a crit on Gouging Fire. Um. Yeah, I think in this situation I'm going to Howl and switch Urshifu on in. Urshifu probably is faster than their last Pokemon except for Monkey Dory. And I think they're just going to try to wall uh, Gouging Fire with Follow Me on Magmar. So 
I'll just buff up my Urshifu. Our knockoff, so we lose our Mystic Water. Another Blizzard, no freeze. Um. So yeah, I'll howl again. And then I'll lock into Surging Strikes. This way, even if we do get burned, Urshifu should still be kind of scary later on. Because we basically have the equivalent of a Swords Dance up now. And then Gouging Fire is also a threat without Magmar on the field. And Magmar's ability is Flame Body. That's why I said if we get burned. There is a chance that we could dodge the 30% chance on each one of our hits, but unlikely that we won't get burned unless we can finish it off in like two hits. Then, then there's a there's an okay chance we can get away without the burn. I doubt we can knock it out in one. Yep, it's gonna take two. No burn on the first one. And I think that means we didn't get burned because he dropped without the animation going off. Okay, so yeah, we did get a little lucky there, but it uh, looked like even with the damage on the first hit, even if we were burned, we would have been totally fine. All right. So they're going to switch back into their Empoleon. And we can dodge the fake out this turn by protecting both. And then we should be able to wrap this up by using Heat Crash on Monkey Dory. And close combat on Empoleon. Okay, let's see. They're gonna change things actually. Alright, so they're gonna drop their weakness to fighting, but we'll still do that and we we still have um, plus two stages of attack on our Urshifu, so close combat probably will pick it up either way. And actually what I'll do, I don't really care if we give Empoleon a boost anymore. So what I'll do is I'll just Breaking Swipe, pick up some chip damage, knock out the uh, Monkey Dory, and then with that extra chip, the Close Combat should definitely KO the uh, Empoleon. It probably would from this range either way, but... Yeah, so the opponent probably has very limited options here. Battle's cancelled, okay. Just gonna say, they were thinking for a second. Alright, this team is definitely a little scarier. The Amoongus in general is just very annoying to deal with. We can at least punish them if they try to like go fake out um, with Incineroar and Burgra. Other King Gambit. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't see any reason to bring Tornadus, and I don't see any reason to bring Raichu, so I think we just double up on our water attackers. And if we see the Amoongus right away, that's going to be kind of annoying, but... We 
we do have Terra flying on our King Gambit, which does potentially have the chance to knock out, I believe. Definitely a lot of different ways this game could go. Okay, so they're going with the Chien Pao Dragonite setup. Which is fine. Going to protect. I'm going to breaking swipe with Terra Fairy. Just because the uh, random outrage really is the scariest thing that could happen here. See if they're just gonna go extreme speed. Okay. They go into King. Oh no, they're not gonna go into King Gambit. That means we could have gotten a burn off here if we actually just played super defensively. Or actually, they might just be doing this defensively. No. Oh, okay, they did go into King Gambit. Interesting. Damn that uh, heart on the top. It's taking up the whole screen. Okay. Sacred Sword. That's fine. So... We can just... Start getting some damage on... Dragonite. I guess we don't know if he's Choice Banded or not, because we didn't see any damage. But he crash should pick up the KO over here now. Regardless, the breaking site will still help mitigate the damage a bit. I'm not sure who they would have brought in the back either at this point because everything else seemed very trick room setup based. Okay, that did a good chunk of damage. He crash does pick up the KO. That was important. Because so we're going to lose King Gambit if it didn't. Wow. Huge damage. That actually probably would have KO'd if, um... If they... If they still had Champau, it still would have KO'd. I would guess. Okay. So... Yeah, at this point, well, first I'm just going to protect. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I can't protect here <laughs> because they could spore me. Um, I mean, we're in a good spot. I'm not even that afraid of falling asleep, so. Nah, actually, I will double up here. Okay, cool. I'm glad I did that. I almost breaking swipe to try to pick up the KO on Dragonite, but Amoongus I think is just purely the problem at this point. Okay, so we're going to lower our damage output on our Gouging Flare, but increase the damage on King Gambit. Okay, that's 50% a Rocky Helmet, so no Citrus Berry. Okay, this just picks up the KO for sure. Urshifu should be able to take out Incineroar without an issue. Yeah, actually... Let's see. Let's see if they can play around the burn first. Because they should be really trying to take out Gouging Fire with that Dragonite. 
that that should be their first like instinct to of what they're trying to do at least. The bowling uh burning bulwark. That should be kind of obvious, but yeah, we wanna dodge. Okay, sweet, so they do get burned. Yeah. Um problem is that they threatened to fake out, so obviously I wanna, you know, block that. Then we'll just use regular Terror Blast with Breaking Swipe if we're able to survive. That all's canceled. Okay. 